Hello. Today we're going to talk about ways in which you as a teacher can share some of what you know with other colleagues. I'd like to start by having you think about the value of writing for a magazine or an online publication. The goal here is therefore to learn how to publish an article about some aspect of teaching. I think we need to assume that the field of language teaching makes progress through teachers, researchers and other professionals sharing our knowledge and experience. And one way this occurs is through the many different kinds of professional publications that are available in the field. So I'd like here to focus on how to write an article for publication for an audience of teachers. How do you start? Well, first of all, we need to recognize that there are many different kinds of publications for teachers. Some may be in print form, some both in print or online, or some only available online. And these different kinds of publications are of many different types. There are local or regional publications. There are international journals such as ELT Journal. There are publications for special audiences such as for ESP practitioners, for example, or for teachers of young learners and for teacher trainers. Some of these publications primarily focus on practice, while others are perhaps geared either towards integrating research theory and practice or towards research and theory. So you need to know the kind of publication that you're aiming for. Then you need to think about the purpose of writing for publication. All publications, no matter their audience, depend on contributions from teachers like you. And writing for a suitable publication is a good way not only of sharing ideas and experience with others, but also helps clarify your own ideas about an issue or topic. Increasingly, journals are now online and can publish more quickly than in the past. Writing content for websites, for publishers, or teaching organizations is also a great way to break into writing, to get started in it. So, first of all, it's important to decide on the kind of publication that you feel you could write for. Is it an online publication, a newsletter, a magazine, or a research journal. The next step is to familiarize yourself with your chosen publication and its audience, the, the content of the articles it publishes, and the style and level of articles that it includes. Who are typical contributors? Are the publishers looking for articles, for book reviews, for reviews of teaching materials? And what guidelines do they give for contributors to the publication? Also, you need to think about how should submissions be written and formatted. Then, reflect on your own teaching experience and situation. You might have an interesting or novel teaching idea, an experience that prompts rethinking or additional ideas about a topic that you might like to respond to or expand on. Can you add a new angle to a topic that's been written about lately? Can you perhaps share classroom research or other forms of inquiry related to your teaching? Then you need to decide if you'd like to work on your own or perhaps collaborate with another teacher. If you are new to writing, it's often easier to write with a colleague. And if an article has two authors, their names are normally listed alphabetically on the published article, except when one author has taken a major role in the paper, in which case his or her name may appear first. To get started, brainstorm ideas for the article. What will the main focus of it be? How will you develop it? What kinds of information and examples will you be able to include? Be guided here by articles that are typically published in the magazine or forum that you wish to contribute to. And then show a draft of what you've written to your colleagues. Don't be discouraged by criticism or suggestions for a writing. Even experienced writers often go through many different versions of articles that they write, including myself. 
When you think your article is ready for submission, send it to the journal editors and hope for the best. Your article may be sent out for review by other professionals selected by the journal editor, and it may take some time before you know whether your article has been accepted, whether it will be accepted subject to some revisions, or whether it's not considered suitable for the magazine. In the case of rejection, don't be discouraged from trying again. Every person who writes for publication will confirm that the feedback you get, both positive and negative, is an essential part of the learning process. Another way of sharing your knowledge and expertise with others is to make a presentation. And so I'd like to uh, discuss how you can clarify and share some of your teaching ideas through making different kinds of presentations. Sharing ideas with colleagues through presentations enables you to share innovative ideas and practices that can also be used to clarify issues and problems and it provides an opportunity to develop a sense of collegiality in a school. So let's focus now on how to use presentations within a teacher support group or as a professional event such as a workshop or conference. First of all, presentations. I still remember clearly one of the first presentations I made, which was in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And as a young scholar, I guess I wanted to demonstrate that I knew something. The audience listened politely. And then afterwards, a respected professor gave me some useful advice. He said, don't try to tell people everything you know. So over the years, I found myself giving presentations to groups as small as 10 or as large as 2,000 and more often these days through webinars like this one or other online sites. And this has been learning to improve my presentation skills. Let's think about topics for presentations. There are a wide variety of topics that are suitable for presentations. For example, it might involve a report on teacher research, such as an action research project, or a presentation on a set of materials and activities you've prepared. Perhaps it could be a case study of a successful or unsuccessful learner, or of a class that created a particular challenge for you. Or it could involve also a presentation based on a conference or a professional seminar that you have attended. What are the guidelines that uh, you should follow in making presentations? Well, here's a list of suggestions I try to keep in mind when I plan and deliver presentations. First of all, you have to start with a strong opening to catch people's attention. It's hard to regain interest if you have lost your audience at the very beginning. Keep your introduction short and sweet and get to the point. Tell the audience what you'll focus on and what they are likely to get out of the talk. Also, keep your audience in mind. Why is this information worth sharing? What's in it for them? Try to make it relevant to your audience's needs and interests. It's also important to keep to the main points and not to overrun. Don't try to tell your audience everything you know as I did when I started out. Be concise. Remember that even adults have limited attention spans. Of course, it's useful to have notes, but don't read from your notes. And make sure people can hear you and don't talk too fast. Also, try using pitch and tone to make your voice more interesting and to hold your audience's attention. Perhaps there's a story that you can use in your talk. Stories help your audience pay attention and help them remember things. If you can bring in a story or a personal experience, your audience is more likely to pay attention to you and to remember your points afterwards. An important thing, I think, is if you do use slides, don't read them aloud. Your audience can read for themselves. Your slides should contain less rather than more information. If you need to provide more information, you can prepare a handout. I wonder if you're familiar with the 10, 20, 30 rule for slideshows, which says use no more than 10 slides, talk for no more than 20 minutes, and use a font size of no less than 30 points, and keep any graphics clear and simple. 
So speak to your audience and not to your slides. Also, smile and connect with your audience through eye contact and distribute your attention equally around the audience. Keep to the point. Don't skip around or use slides that don't tell a part of your story. Try to use gestures and movement as well. Don't just stand like a robot, but move around. Of course, check out the technology in advance and have a backup plan in case it doesn't work.